Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I have a follow up. I did a Sunday Morning Coffee episode where I talked about waiting and how patience really isn't the virtue that it's touted to be. Today, I have a question for you. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? This question is more of like a jab, jab, jab that self development gurus and life coaches, ones that I follow myself, will use as a hot poker to get you moving, to get you motivated. What are you waiting for? A simple question that triggers, triggers, triggers all of us. Wow, that's a good question. What am I waiting for? Well, I want to to just deconstruct this question. What are you waiting for? And I want to say the wait, my dear friends, is the point. The wait is the purpose. The just waiting is exactly the purpose of your life. The process in between the doing is what we would maybe call waiting, the action, the pause, the action, the pause. The pause is the waiting. We should practice waiting. Waiting is what some refer to as meditation. Time with ourselves to clear our thoughts to listen and hear our own voice versus all of the other demands and expectations and voices of the lovely people that we have in our lives, our family, our friends, our bosses, our teachers from long ago reminding us of our potentials. Oh, so much pressure, so much pressure happens in the doing, and yet we want to skip and just do, do, do. If we are always doing, always in action, aren't we missing the point of life, which is the experiences of the process. Yes, sometimes the process and the waiting is a big pain in the behind. It is filled with struggle and challenge and stressors. And I have to figure this out. It's filled with a lot of unknowns. But in the unknown, that's when we learn. When you acknowledge that what you know is not a lot and what you don't know is greater, then there's an infinite field of possibilities to explore, to learn, to grow, to have adventures. And isn't that the point of this time in between the actions? To dream, to explore, to experiment, to try new things, to struggle a bit, Because it's natural to be uncomfortable. If we're always comfortable, then we're kind of lying to ourselves about the point of action after all and outcome, aren't we? Here's what I mean by that. If we're always taking action and we're only focused on the glory of the action, then we're clearly outrunning or avoiding something greater, something deeper, something bigger, which is probably connected to the anchor of our spirit, our, the anchor of our truest self. You know how some of those um, self-help gurus, they share with us about how maybe our deepest fear is that we are afraid of how powerful we are. Some attribute that to Marianne Williamson, by the way, and the field of limitless possibilities to Deepak Chopra. Yeah, see, I listen, I listen. What if it's true, though, that we're afraid of how amazing our spirit is? Are we really afraid to let ourselves down, to disappoint ourselves? Are we so used to being in relationships where we create, we create these external experiences of disappointment and make it mean something about ourselves that just affirms our own deeper fear that maybe I'm really worth way more than what I give myself credit for? Worth, worthiness. Are you enough? There's so much deep stuff here. And here's the news flash, something I've discovered recently, is maybe the whole being your best self thing isn't about learning new things, techniques and tools and trying different approaches and having, having all these different pieces of insight and information coming from all these various experts. Maybe, maybe, just maybe being your best self is Letting you be you. 
letting that soul part of you that you're afraid of this, what you might find out about yourself or discover about yourself, let it out. Let it be. Let yourself discover yourself. Let that treasure of your sacred soul, which is connected to God, it is connected. You are connected to the creator of all things, to the universe. You are the stars. You are one with all of those ascended masters that you put on such a high regard, that you adore, that you love, all of them, the religious teachers, the spiritual teachers, all of them, the ones you love so dearly, you are one with them. You are no different. You are one with. That's why you're so attracted and drawn to them because they are like you and you are like them. And it's hard to believe that with your brain. <laughs> it is. It is. I know. I know. I'm not suggesting you just magically accept that. I'm saying this is a process that happens during the waiting. So what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for me to allow me to start to show up more. And in order to allow me to show up more, I need to wait. I got to be in a state where I'm not pushing and pressuring and going and achieving the goals that I set when I was 18 years old or that my parents dreamed for me. It is time, especially at this point in life, whatever decade you're entering into or leaving, to consider that your soul has been all along waiting, waiting for you to acknowledge and recognize even bigger, even grander, even more beautifully well-lit, vibrant, radiant parts of you. That doesn't mean, newsflash, that doesn't mean you have to do bigger things. It's not about doing it all. It's just about being and embracing the being and enjoying the beingness for yourself. Guess what? The waiting is where you get to enjoy being with yourself. Are you afraid to be with yourself? Is that why you're just so busy? Are you just so busy doing so many things for other people, just distracting yourself from your own feelings of worthiness or lack or inadequacy? Maybe if you spent time with yourself in this waiting time, and you made your waiting time, sacred time, and you actually let yourself just be and explore and share your own emotions with, with yourself, cry by yourself, get angry by yourself, talk to yourself, hear yourself, listen to you without the caveat and the attachment of, okay, I have to do something about this now. If I want this dream to happen, I had to make it happen. No. No, that's not the point of the waiting. The point of the waiting is this desired, sacred self time so that your spirit feels safe, so that your heart feels safe for you to share and express your feelings and emotions so your spirit can celebrate your feelings and emotions and expression with you. Without the attachment of good or bad, there's just release and flow and connection because there's trust with your heart and your soul. And the trust, the trust is built when you're waiting. Make the most of the relationship you have within yourself. And if you don't have one or you have no idea how to start, just spend some time when you're waiting, creating opportunities to wait. Maybe you bring a journal with you. When you're waiting for something, maybe you ride a bus in the mornings to work and that's like kind of this waiting time. You're waiting to get somewhere. Maybe you listen to a podcast that's inspiring you or giving you some positive affirmation, something that your soul really loves and aligns with. Maybe you do a meditation, spend some time in meditation. Meditation, by the way, doesn't have to be sitting in a cl closet all dark and oming for an hour and a half. Meditations can be mantra style repeating a mantra over and over again, which can be connected to an affirmation. It's, they're kind of similar, actually, from my experience anyway. And this energy of the waiting, you can really make the most of it by getting to know yourself, your sweet spirit self. Before you even get out of bed in the morning, you can have a conversation with yourself. You can encourage yourself. You can listen to yourself or feel your heartbeat. Breathe with intention. You can do other things like tapping. I love tapping, by the way, emotional freedom technique. I love it. I have stuff on my um, fairy grasshopper YouTube channel on how to tap. 
if you're interested in that. I have audios about it. I have all sorts of stuff about tapping. Just beautiful flow. If you have a hard time just quieting the mind to meditate, try tapping. It might, might help you. Let your soul flow and work with your heart and build the relationship inside yourself while you're waiting. This is so precious this time. Use it. Use it. So when somebody asks you, what are you waiting for? Mm, I think waiting is so yummy. I am waiting because it's part of the process. And I am letting myself savor the unfolding of life as it rises to greet me during this time of waiting. And when I am waiting, I can hear my voice. That's what I'm waiting for. Me. And when I quiet other things and I focus on myself... I can hear me. (laughs) I can hear my voice. I'm going to tell you this. I tell this to my clients all the time in private session. You are the expert of you. You are. You are your subject matter expert. Yes, you are. Indeed. But in order to trust that, in order to know that, you've got to build the relationship, which means you need to be present. You need to feel. You need to be with yourself. And that's what waiting is all about. It's a gift. Embrace it. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening to the Sunday Morning Coffee episode. What are you waiting for? Oh, yes. Let's enjoy the wait collectively together, my friends. If you're looking for more inspired Sunday Morning Coffee episodes, you can check out Above Life channel on YouTube, where this podcast has a playlist. You can also find me, if you're interested in my work, at Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. You can find me on social media at Facebook, Bridget Inspired, and on Instagram, Bridget Inspired. Thanks for listening.